What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now, about a year ago, I did my official review on the NECA one quarter scale version of Batman Begins, and that was an awesome figure. And I've been waiting on the quarter scale Hot Toys version for about a couple of months now. There were delays, you know how it goes, but we finally got it in studio. And just in case you haven't already seen that review, I'll post a link in the description so that you can make comparisons between this figure and the NECA quarter scale. Now it's pretty much universally agreed that the Nolan trilogy really caused a paradigm shift as it relates to superhero films. And although the second film in the trilogy really got the most critical acclaim, one of my favorites is definitely Batman Begins, especially because of the suit. Prior to NECA's quarter scale figure, which is really a fraction of the cost, the only real option that you had for a high-end Batman Begins collectible was the Enterbay figure, and we all know how astronomically expensive that is. But now Hot Toys is in the game, so does this suit measure up? Well, let's find out. After much delay, today we're going to be reviewing Hot Toys version of Batman Begins, the 1 4 scale figure. Let's take a closer look. Now if you watched the NECA review, you know how impressed I was by that head sculpt. That was Christian Bale. But I have to say, this Hot Toys version is absolutely stunning. This is gorgeous, guys. I absolutely love the detail here. The cowl is perfect. I love that really menacing stare. It is beautiful. Most importantly is in his mouth area, the imperfections in the skin. I especially like his lip area. This is just really well done. And again, it's a much larger version of the original 1-6 scale version. But I think there's a lot more detail in this. This is beautiful, guys. Now, of course, the remarkable attention to detail also extends to the midsection of this piece. Now, one thing I do have to mention that's different from the NECA figure is that this is one solid rubber piece. Now, that presents its own challenges in terms of flexibility, malleability, the limitations on poses, which I've already come to notice, but most importantly, the wear and tear. I think if you move this figure around too much, or if you hold it too long in a strenuous pose, it might cause some crackings. But nevertheless, I do love the design of the suit. Even though it's one solid piece, it still looks modular. And then of course, one of the things that's most impressive that I didn't like about the Interbay figure is that it's not matte. Now the gauntlets here are pretty impressive. I actually like how the gauntlets really stick out, but there is one thing that kind of bothered me, and I don't know why they did this. It was a very bizarre design choice. You see, on the inner lining of the gauntlet, there is a split. Now it looks weird, and at first I thought that it was actually broken until I checked the other gauntlet, and it's the same on the other side. Now, presumably this is to add a little bit more flexibility when you're posing the hands or even when to put them in and take them off. I just think they could have done that a little better and it looks kind of sloppy. The utility belt on the other hand is spectacular and the best way that I can describe it is it's a hybrid between the NECA figure and the Interbay figure and they really perfected it on this Hot Toys version. I absolutely love the paint job, there's a lot of detail there and it contrasts really well with the suit. One of the other reasons that I like this belt is they have an ingenious way to take it off and on. It's very sturdy, not to mention it has an inner lining so that the paint doesn't eventually smudge onto the actual figure. And that was a nice job on Hot Toys' part. Now again, I just have to remark on this. I think that Hot Toys, in making the final design of this piece, really looked at what NECA did and what Interbay did and made a hybridization of the two. I absolutely love this cape. It's really what I wanted for the Enterbay figure. It is beautiful and I think a little bit more representative of what we see in the film. The great thing about it is that it has this really kind of velveteen finish, which is really nice. And most importantly, something that I personally love is the way that you attach it to the actual figure is completely magnetic, which is cool. It's just an easy way for you to get it off and on. Now, very similar to the NECA figure, when I took it out of the box, it was dense as hell. This thing is a freaking tank. And I absolutely love the stance and the boots here. This thing is freaking awesome, guys. Now, there is so much flexibility in the boots, not to mention the fact that they're incredibly detailed. Just take a look at those textures, especially the cleats on the bottom. Most importantly, Hot Toys is using that really nice joint ball system that gives you a lot of flexibility. And I was really impressed here because I didn't think it was going to be that malleable. Now the reverse side of this piece is truly spectacular guys, and it's very thematic. You put this under the right kind of lighting, especially when it's a mirrored back, and it's going to look epic. Just look at that guys. There are certain scenes in Batman Begins where you see the back of Batman. Just look at that brilliant cowl, and again, you get a chance to really see how beautiful the cape is. The folds are really nice, and it's draping across the entire figure. It's just freaking awesome, guys. So you definitely need to mirror this, and it also needs really good lighting. Look at that. 
Now I'm going to tell you something. I can see that Hot Toys put a lot of thought into the design choices here, particularly with the base. Now if you look and notice, what does this look like to you? To me it looks like one of those three-dimensional cardboard cutouts to promote the film on the opening weekend. Not to mention that it has a really nice graphic of the bat symbol reminiscent of the Batman Begins logo. It's really nice. The lip of the base also reads Batman. It's that nice silver plaque. Guys, this is just a really nice design choice and it goes really well with the main piece and only serves to really enhance it. Now, of course, like with most Hot Toys offerings, you also get alternate heads. And this is a really great head sculpt of Christian Bale. Even though I think the hair, for some reason, is a little bit too gray, guy looks like he should be rocking some Just For Men for some reason. I don't know why it looks this light, but it is what it is. But the overall sculpt looks pretty great. Now, this is another option that you can use in order for you to display this piece. They give you the kind of hood ski mask in order for you to display it with that version because there is an alternate costume version that you can use. And it's very detailed, I have to admit. It's not cheap at all. It's actual fabric and it's very high quality. In addition to the ski masks, you also get the harness, the very rudimentary harness, I might say, that he has before he officially dons the actual costume of Batman. It's very detailed. And props to Hot Toys for really giving you a lot of options in which to display this piece. You also get two additional mouthpieces, so if you want to have some really dynamic poses, you have one with his mouth open screaming, and then the other one is kind of snickering, and they're just as detailed. The cool thing is, is that it's not a pain in the ass to swap out because they're completely magnetic. <laughs> this is probably one of the coolest aspects of this figure. Now, if you ask me to summarize this piece in one word, or maybe two, it's freaking accessories up the yin-yang. Just look at that. He has an entire arsenal of things in which to beat the hell out of the bad guys. It is incredible how many things comes with this piece. Most notably, of course, is his grapple gun. You also have the batarangs. And you even have that little thing that called those bats on that frequency, whatever the hell that thing was. I mean, this is just an incredible amount of detail that they give you. So it's really worth the price point. And trust me, this is a pretty high-end freaking piece. But for all the accessories, guys, I have to say, by far the coolest one is the Joker calling card. And not just the Joker calling card, it also comes with the evidence label in the Ziploc bag. That is freaking awesome. And this definitely turned it over for me. When I saw this little thing in there, I was like, this thing is totally worth it. It is so freaking awesome. Hot Toys did a really great job in providing just those little details to make this piece really worth it. And look at how detailed it is, guys. The evidence label has writing on it. And finally, rounding out the last bit of accessories are seven additional hands for various poses. Though, I would make a recommendation, guys. Do not do too many dynamic poses with this. If you have the NECA figure, which is probably like 120 bucks right now, I would reserve dynamic poses for that figure because that's what it's meant for. This one is more of kind of a museum piece. You really don't want to be stressing it out too much given the fact that it's a full rubber body suit and you don't want cracks eventually. That's really the only downside. Okay, so despite a few flaws and some questionable design choices, I still have to give this a holy grail seal of approval. This thing is freaking awesome, guys. But I do say that with a bit of a caveat. Don't get rid of your NECA figure just yet, because what the NECA figure can do is something that this figure can't do, and it's dynamic poses. So, guys, if you already have the NECA figure, definitely keep it. Now before I go, I just gotta send a real special shout out to the folks over at Sideshow Collectibles for really working with me and sending me constant updates on when this product was gonna be released. So thank you very much guys, I really appreciate it. Alright everybody, so that's my official review on Hot Toys version of Batman Begins, the 1 4 scale figure. As always, I thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews.